Namaste. So verses 11 through 16 of Sri Aparokshanabhutihi are a capsule description of the process of vichara, atma vichara, specifically. Vichara means investigation, going deep into a question, not just being satisfied with a verbal answer, but adopting a new state of being based on the nature of the question. And in these two verses today, we're going to get a little hint of the results of this process. Aum etayor yadupadanam ekang sukshmam sadavyayam yataiva mrighatadinam vichara soyamidrishaha etayo of these two yat which upadanam material, ekang, one, sukshmang, subtle, sat, existence, avyayang, unchanging, yataiva, just as, mrit, earth, gatadinang, of the pot and the like, vicharaha, self-inquiry, Soyam, etc. Idrishaha, endowed with such qualities. The material cause of these two, that is, ignorance and thought, is the one without a second, subtle, not apprehended by the senses, and unchanging sat, existence just as the earth is the material cause of the pot and the like. This is the way of that vichara. Ahang eko pisukshmascha jnata sakshi sadavyayaha tadahang natrasandeho vichara soyamidrishaha Aham I, ekaha, one, api, also, sukshmaha, the subtle, cha, and, jnata, the knower, sakshi, the witness, sat, the existent, avyayaha, the unchanging, tat, that, ahang, I, Na, not. Atra, here. Sandehaha, doubt. Vicharaha, self inquiry. Soyam, etc. Idrishaha, endowed with such qualities. As I am also the one, the subtle, the knower, the witness, the ever existent and the unchanging. So there is no doubt that I am that, that is, Brahman. Such is this inquiry. So these two verses give us a capsule description of the result of Atma Vichara, the conclusion of the process. The first two 11 and 12, give the process itself. Then 13 and 14 give the middle part of the process, where one lives in the question, stands in the question, saturates the mind and consciousness with the question until no other thoughts impede. And then... These two verses give the conclusion. Basically, I am that. Ahang Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. 
So, of course, no, no verbal description can adequately describe the actual process because what we're talking about is a process of transforming being. So any verbal description is simply a finger pointing at the moon. <laughs> that the moon is the actual subject, the state of being is the actual topic of these six verses. The process of immersing oneself in a deep question until it takes over your whole thought process and then dropping it, walking away and waiting for the answer without expectation, but just allowing the answer to come and it will come. If you read the literature on scientific discovery, for example, it's full of stories like this. In fact, quantum mechanics was discovered by Niels Bohr, the famous physicist, in exactly this way. He was trying to come up with an explanation for the energy level changes in the electron shells of the atom. And he had reached a point where his reasoning, his math, could only take him so far. And so he dived into the question, literally covering the walls with equations and staring at them for hours. And then he walked out of his office, closed the door, forgot all about it, and went to lunch. And as he was going to lunch, he caught the bus. And if you've been in a bus in Europe or really in anywhere, you know you have to step up on a step to get into the bus. So Bohr put his foot on the first step to go up into the bus and the solution hit him like a ton of bricks. It's stepwise, quantized. The energy shells are quantum things, huh? each with its own nature and behavior and so on. And thus, from this simple insight, the whole of quantum mechanics was born. And now ask any artist, any musician or painter or novelist or anyone who has had a big idea and then wants to express it in some medium. How do they work? It's the same process. They absorb themselves in the question until it fills them to overflowing. And then they go do something else. Huh? Noodle around on the piano. And suddenly it hits them. Da 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 da. <laughs> da 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 da. See? So this is the process of intuitive knowledge creative discovery that one assumes a state of being not simply asks a verbal question like I wrote to Richard the other day we're not just having a nice philosophical discussion over tea this is not just friendly talks these are deep questions involving our whole being so how can it be just a philosophical matter? How can it be limited to simple verbal discussion? See, and th this is the quarrel or the issue that we have with Ramanashramam. Ramanashramam, first of all, they pose that 
Ramana Maharshi invented this vichara, which he didn't. It was well known for thousands of years in Vedic culture, in the Advaita tradition. And second of all, through their books and publications, without saying it directly, but they have reduced it to a simple verbal discussion. Like people would approach Bhagavan Maharshi and ask questions, and then he would answer. And maybe they would have an insight, maybe not. But this question and answer mode was supposed to be the way that the knowledge is transferred. It's not. It's an unrealistic portrayal of the process of Atma Vichara. And this has led to the whole Neo Advaita fiasco, where simple word knowledge of Vedanta and Advaita is taken as realization, which it's not. So we have to back up and take a fresh look at the whole question of Atma Vichara. What is the experience like? See, the scriptures don't talk about this very much because in the days when the scriptures were written or compiled, everybody had a guru. I mean, everybody who was anybody <laughs> in spiritual life had a realized guru. The culture at the time was optimized for producing realized beings. Now, of course, it's a different matter. And because of the degradation of Vedic culture, especially, realized beings are very rare. One in a billion. So because we don't have access to someone who's experienced, we tend to take the verbal description as the real thing. It's not. It can't be, because we're talking about being, consciousness. So the verbal description is simply a pointer. It points at something. What is it pointing at? The experience of Atma Vichara. And we've gone over this several times now, but I'll go over it one more time where you fill yourself with the question. You obsess over the question. You immerse yourself in the question, whatever the question is. Who am I? Or how is this universe created? Or what is the path to self-realization? Or any number of similar questions. And then, once you have driven out all other thoughts, all other preoccupations from the mind, you drop it. You go off and do something else. And one day or one week or one month later, whatever it is, boom, suddenly the solution hits you unexpectedly. You're given a vision as I was, as I described in yesterday's video. Or suddenly the, the model of the solution springs into the fully formed answer in your mind. How does this work? Well, because we are Brahman. We are the self. We actually know everything. We have access to all knowledge, so why not? <laughs> but asking the question as Brahman and directing the question to Maya is a very important part of the whole experience. I don't know why they don't say this in the scriptures, but it's absolutely a part of my experience. I invoke the goddess using the mantra 
Mahasodashi mantra, which is very powerful, brings her into focus and then asks the question or actually simply become the question, meditate on the question. And this process is actually portrayed very nicely in the tantras. But in, in that scenario, it's Devi, Shakti, approaching Shiva with the questions. Questions like, how can the whole range of beings in samsara become liberated? Wonderful questions, deep questions. Questions that only Shiva, only Brahman can answer because it is a matter of being and consciousness. So this is how questions of that nature are to be addressed. Yes, the book learning can help to frame the question. The words can help to delimit the question and focus it, give it a subject and an object and so on. But ultimately the answer has to come from deep within. And that is the process that leads to enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.